Mike Butcher with TechCrunch, and I'm here with Steve Martosi of Splice. Now, no, it's not a, a new kind of lemon slicer. It's a <laughs> fantastic cloud-based app which uh, enables musicians to collaborate far more effectively. Yeah. And as a, as a former amateur drummer, Great. I must admit, uh, I was quite excited when I heard about this. Great. Um, I mean, uh, I think a lot of people would think uh, when you're talking about cloud platforms for music, that people yeah. immediately think things like SoundCloud. Yeah. But it, you're quite different, aren't you? Just run us through it. What, yeah, what I mean, if doing. you, totally. We were really for the production process while music is being created, yeah. uh, before it's really even ready to be listened to in a lot of cases. Um, I think a GitHub analogy might work better for some people to wrap their head around, but uh, it's so much more than that. It's really this collaborative layer for music that's never existed before. What I lo love about it is that, um, in particular, I think the, uh, for, for musicians are who are spread around, yeah. which is many of them now, totally. you know, everybody's always on a plane somewhere, and if you think of the way that mo modern music production is, totally. you know, the singer is in one city, the band is in another yeah. city, etc. It's very interesting to see that this sort of uh, application emerge. Um, and I think the other thing is interesting is, is how you get, is, is in a sense the, the version control. Yeah. Because as a musician, you know, a little bit, it's a little bit geeky about music. Totally, totally. But uh, the version control is super important. Yeah. You know, people are uh, one, uploading files to Dropbox or, or working them on locally, stuff, overwriting. Yeah. And it's incredibly complex, mm -hmm. and, and th you're really addressing that issue, aren't you? Totally, and that's like that was the core thing that we set out to do is to yeah. enable that collaboration. And like you said, there could be musicians all over the world working together, or even if it's one electronic producer in their bedroom, they still need to do mastering and find samples, and everything is collaborative in music. And so we get to enable so much of that uh, in a way that just never existed before. When you were, uh, I, I was reading that you'd raised uh, about just about seven seven million yeah, dollars. Um, so far from a, a number of investors. Um, when you were sort of pitching it to, yeah. to investors, VCs, how, did they immediately get it or did you really have to kind of take them through a sort of educational journey? It's, a, it's very different across the VC spectrum, right? Yeah. Like you, having been a musician, have a very good understanding of the struggles. And anyone who's been a music producer knows that the workflow they, they have is like it's still the 90s. You know, you're using this yeah. big, heavy desktop software. They never even thought of the cloud before. And uh, you know, I remember doing the product demo for Union Square Ventures, and they really just saw the world that we were trying to create, and they believe in that. Mm. So uh, it's very different, though, across the spectrum. Well, Fred Wilson, though, is famously known as a, a massive music fan, though, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, those guys really understood it from the start. And the guys at True, Adam at True, who's uh, who's on our board, is just he gets it. Um, when you um, when you were sort of coming up with the idea, what? Yeah. What, what, what sort of things did you look at that are already out there, existing, yeah. um, and what, what made you think of this in the first place? So I believe that every music fan who's a programmer at some point thinks GitHub for Ableton, GitHub for music, right? Yeah. But how you get started with that is impossible, and, and is it a real problem for musicians? So uh, my co-founder uh, is a great programmer, Matt Amanetti, who was an audio engineer for half his life. He knew the struggles and got obsessed about it as soon as we talked about it. And then the inspiration came from a musician friend of mine who got into programming and said, you know, where's GitHub for music? And so like that kind of kernel of struggle from both sides is the thinking about it as the programmer and from the musician, and then having the uh, co-founder to actually be able to solve how hard of a problem it is, let us get started. But the weird thing is, isn't it, is that modern musicians now will practically have to be programmers uh, often um, because you, there's so much tech involved now. Yeah. And also, uh, the, the creative process has now become so tech-oriented. Which is extremely empowering, right? So like, there's a, an interesting difference we're seeing between a musician who plays an instrument and a producer who can go into this software and make entire songs and do every instrument and sequence it and send it out to the world on their own. And you see a lot of the electronic music artists being able to do things themselves in a bedroom on a laptop. Um, I, I suppose you might get this kind of question all the time yeah. around the fact that, um, you know, in, in that kind of classic uh, phrase that we love in technology journalism was what would happen if Google did this yeah. in the same way, what would happen if SoundCloud did this, yeah. uh, which is, uh, you know, they could have scale and, uh, you know, they could switch on a few features perhaps in some way. What would be your kind of, uh, your, your response to that? Yeah, I think it's, the good news is it's a lot harder than a few features to turn on. I yeah. mean, the, to be able to do what we've done for some of these uh, music platforms like Apple's Logic, 
We've had to actually parse their file system, which is a binary file that took forever to do. So there's a lot of barriers to entry. Ableton even tried their own kind of collaborative layer years ago, mm. and uh, it didn't even make it out of beta, because it's, it's a DNA thing that I don't think really lives with the music software. These guys are making yeah. incredible tools that are super cool, make great sound, but workflow and collaboration, I don't think it's yeah. really in the DNA. It's, 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 a, it's a little bit like saying, uh, Oh, but you know, we've already got email. Why do we need Yammer or right. you know, yeah. whatever? You yeah, know. it's a whole, it's a whole new layer that just wasn't there. So. Yeah. Um, uh, you're based in New York. I'm in New York. My co-founder's in LA, so we have offices in New York and LA. There you go. You see, the two big music hubs. I know. I got a place to go in the winter too. The, <laughs> lovely, right? <laughs> yeah. California, here I come. Um, the New York tech scene. You've seen the New York tech scene grow up. I mean, what, how do you characterize it right now? You know, it's funny. I've been in it for long enough with GroupMe before this. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I see it kind of goes in these classes, like all my friends from, from their round, some of their companies are done, they're starting new ones. I think it's vibrant. I think the, the thing that's different is, like, the hype of New York Tech. Like, I don't see the hype. I think it just is. It's just part of the, yeah. the city now. So yeah. uh, I think it's just changed in a good way to the point where it's just part of the city and great companies are being built. And it's just uh, in the same way that, uh, you know, you had the kind of emergence of the, sort of the new tech scene and sort of right. about five, ten years ago. Right. Uh, in the valley, similarly, exactly the same here. And I think the other thing is interesting, isn't it, is that uh, you have so many existing industries and verticals in New York, such as media, fashion, um, yep. m music, obviously, uh, that uh, the technology companies here uh, really go up, uh, after those so. verticals, don't they? They did a great job in fashion, you know, advertising back in the day, and like those things are still so strong here. FinTech is really, you know, blowing up right yeah. now, and like there's great companies here doing that. My old uh, GroupMe co-founder is doing a, a platform called Fundera that's helping people find small business loans, and so you must you must reminisce slightly about the whole GroupMe thing. When I'm here, um, I do. I bet you, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it launched at TechCrunch, right? Yeah, yeah, we built it at the TechCrunch yes, Hackathon, right. the first one in New York. Amazing, so. and it, and you do you, what? You, I mean, just quickly, what's your uh, little take on the mess explosion in messaging that's going on now? I mean, it, it was just an obvious thing, right? We yeah. knew we needed it. it. It's a lot of it's driven out of need and the desire for humans to communicate. Um, and it's fun now, I can do angel investing and, and advising on things that are in the space, but people are really running with it, so it's, it's, it's really changed. Well, Steve from Splice, thank you very much for yeah. coming and chatting thank to you. us at TechCrunch Disrupt. Uh, anyway, it's back to the show.